Temporomandibular joint examination. Temporomandibular joint familiar is TMJ is the joint between temporal bone and the mandible. The TMJ is capable of a combination of both hinge and sliding movement. Hence it is also known as jinglimo arthroidal joint. Jinglimo meaning hinge-like movement, and arthroidal meaning gliding movement. For examination of TMJ, we should first know few things. TMJ is located about 1.5 cm anterior to the tragus of the ear. Now the functional anatomy. Mandibular movements are achieved by combination of muscle activity along with rotation or translation in the temporomandibular joints. Opening movement is by the bilateral contraction of the lateral pterygoid muscles. Closing movement is by the bilateral contraction of the masseter. Temporalis and medial pterygoid muscle. Protrusive movement is by simultaneous bilateral contraction of the inferior bellies of the lateral pterygoid muscle. Retrusive movement is accomplished by the temporalis and suprayoid muscles. Lateral excursions of the mandible are brought about by the lateral pterygoids of the opposite side and the temporalis which assists the movement. Here you can see the 3D visualization of the skull in different views. This is masseter muscle. This large fan-shaped muscle is the temporalis. This muscle is medial pterygoid and this one is the lateral pterygoid. Now let's go to the examination part. Examination of TMJ includes Examination of the TMJ proper Examination of the muscles of mastication Examination of the accessory muscles Examination of TMJ proper TMJ is examined under three basic headings Inspection, palpation, and auscultation Under inspection, we inspect for the facial asymmetry Presence of any swellings, ulcerations in the preauricular regions. Observe for the deviation or deflection of the mandible on mouth opening. If the mandibular midline moves to one side in the initial stage of mouth opening and then returns back to the original position at maximal mouth opening is called deviation. While if the mandibular midline fails to return to the original position at maximal mouth opening, it is called deflection. Now the palpation. Condyles can be palpated by extra-auricular and intra-auricular methods. Intra-auricular palpation. The little finger is placed inside the external auditory venous. During the mandibular movement, the condylar movements are felt with the pulp of the little finger. Extra-auricular palpation. The condyles are palpated in the pre-auricular region about 1.5 cm medial to the tragus of the ear. Joint noises and pain might be the responses while palpating. Note whether the noises occur while wide opening, closing the mouth, or while intermediate opening. While palpating, palpate for tenderness of TMJ during rest and clenching. Right and left excursion, protrusion and retrusion. Also check for hypermobility, hypomobility and mouth opening. Now we will auscultate the TMJ. For auscultation the bell end of the stethoscope is placed medial to the tragus of the ear. Most commonly heard joint sounds are clicking sound, popping sound, crepitus, thud sound, snap sound. Examination of the muscles of mastication. Muscle which help in mastication are called the masticatory muscles. Now, let's begin with the temporalis. Temporalis is palpated simultaneously with the fingertips aligned in a row from the hairline just above the supraorbital ridge to above the ear. The patient is asked to report any discomfort or pain. Masseter. Masseter is palpated bilaterally in the area overlying the anterior border of the mandibular ramus. 
The muscle mass and bulk of masseter is also felt in the patient response as recorded. Pterygoid muscles. Palpation of the pterygoid muscle is difficult because of the inaccessibility of the muscle. For medial pterygoid, it can be palpated by placement of the index finger laterally and posteriorly into the floor of the mouth towards the medial surface of the angle of the mandible. For lateral pterygoid, the index finger is positioned distal and posterior to the maxillary tuberosity and posterior pressure is exerted to compress tissue against the muscle. Examination of the accessory muscles. The gastric muscle. The gastric muscles are palpated with the fingertips aligned roughly parallel to the inferior border of the mandible in the submental and submandibular region. Cervical examination. Under cervical examination we check for mobility of the neck and examine for range and symptoms. Patient is first asked to look to the right and then to the left. There should be at least 70 degree rotation in each direction. Now the patient is asked to look upward as far as possible and then downward. Then the response of the patient is recorded. Sternoclinomostoid muscle. Palpation is done bilaterally on the outer surface of the mastoid fossa behind the ear. The entire length of the muscle is palpated down to its origin near the clavicle. Posterior cervical muscles. In palpating these muscles, the examiner's fingers slip behind the patient's head. Those of the right hand palpate the right occipital area and those of the left hand palpate the left occipital area. The fingers then move down the length of the neck muscles through the cervical area and any patient discomfort is recorded. That's all for TMJ examination. Hope you liked the video. Thank you for your patience. See you next time. Till then study smart.